So yesterday I was interviewed on a podcast and the interviewer asked me a question at the very end. It's a leadership podcast and we talked about all kinds of things around leading people, leading ourselves, leading our teams, leading our children, leading our families. Um, but it was her last question that really thought, I thought it was a fantastic question. So I thought I want to share my, I want to share a video on this. And the question was around if you could kind of boil it down to one success principle that's going to lead people, you know, have people lead a healthy life. Um, from a leadership perspective, both professionally in our businesses, but also in our home life, what, what is it? And I kind of paused because it reminded me of a conversation I had with a client of mine years ago when I used to have my family practice. And it was a 16 year old actually in my office that asked me the exact same question. And I remember she looking at me saying, okay, okay Karen, like there's lots of things in your brain. What is the one piece of advice you could tell teenagers that would help them lead a happy, healthy, successful life? What would it be? And I remember looking at her going, oh my goodness, what a great question from a 16 year old. Um, I'm like, okay, I don't want to just kind of give you like any answer. I want to kind of actually give you a really well thought out, thought out, uh, thought out uh, answer. And so let me, let me give me one week and I'm going to come back. And so the following week I saw her, I said, okay, I know my answer. And so she said, okay. And I said, you've probably seen this like in tons of areas You've probably seen it in a lot of your doctor's offices. It's, in a, it's a very popular proverb um, in, in family doctor's offices, with like a little cat that's like on a branch that's holding on for its dear life. But it's called the serenity prayer. And I preface it that this is not based on, it's, it's a proverb. So it doesn't matter what your faith background is, okay? But this is, it is a proverb that is so incredibly powerful when we really absorb it and we actually apply it. Okay. So this is the proverb. Okay. This is what it says. And I just want you to absorb this, this wording. It says, God, help me understand the things I can control. Help me understand the things I cannot control. Give me the courage to face the things I can. Help me accept the things I cannot, and give me the wisdom to know the difference. Think about that just for a moment. If we put all of our energy and focus on things we can control, and we had the courage to focus on the things we can control, instead of focusing on all the other things we can't control, what other people think, what our grades are, you know, uh, you know, the economy, COVID, like there's all these things we cannot control. But if we can put our focus over here, this is with what's going to give us peace. And is that not what everybody wants? Do we not all want peace? Do we all not want success? Do we not all want prosperity? Do we all not want to be happy? Do we all not want to be well? You know, all of our videos, we talk either about business, relationships, or wellness topics. That's what we talk about. This one touches on all three. Because if we really focus, literally just today, we were actually teaching one of our courses on for senior leadership and how do you, um, you know, developing kind of the best practices for great senior leadership teams. And we were literally teaching a course on managing change and anxiety. And I didn't really think about it actually till now, but essentially a huge part of one of the modules that we we're actually teaching was actually about this, this sense around managing change and anxiety. What's interesting is that for people, a lot of people who have anxiety, they're focusing on exactly the opposite with what I just talked about. What they're focusing in on is all the things that they can't control instead of all the things that they can control. So that's what I told the six-year-old client many years ago. That's what I told a podcast interviewer yesterday is that when we can really, really absorb that proverb, focus on what the things we can control and have the courage to do it. So if we, something that we can control, we cannot control marks, we can control asking for help. We can't control the economy, we can control getting advisors and more data and doing strategy plans. We can't control a tricky boss, we can control how we learn to respond to the tricky boss. We cannot control our children. We can control learning communication tools to learn how to increase our power to influence 
to reach out and build our relationships through our kids. Do you see how this works? So if we can, it's like you acknowledge the things you can't control that are frustrating, but you immediately like shift gears and then you put all of your energy and your focus over here. And not only is that going to create, give you more results, that's going to give you more power, like an empowerment. That's also going to give you peace, peace. And so that is what I would say of all the different things that I teach. That would be kind of what one of the, the golden kind of nuggets I'd actually say that if we can all really learn to apply that. And so what I did after um, this teenager actually had asked me this question, she looked at me and she had a pen and paper, pen and paper in her session frantically writing it all down. She goes, Karen, that is like, I love it. That's so great. And after she left, I thought, you know what? This is good for everybody. So I actually got it written as a wall tattoo in my office in Toronto. Massive wall tattoo, like 10 feet, 10 feet by like six feet because I wanted every one of my clients and my family practice, when they kind of come in, I wanted them to see it. And now that we work with businesses and entrepreneurs, um, it's, it's the same leadership principle, success principle that now can actually apply to leadership and businesses. So really think about everybody. Again, focusing on kind of separating those two things, focus on what things I can control, accept the things I cannot, give me the courage to focus on the things I can, help me accept the things I cannot, and give me the wisdom to know the difference.